One of the tests that is often done for women that have abnormal vaginal bleeding is called an endometrial biopsy. It's also called an EMB. So what is an endometrial biopsy? It's basically a test in which we collect some um, cells from the inside of your uterus to make sure that you don't have cancer or a precancerous change in the inside of the uterus. We often do this for women that have abnormal bleeding, particularly if they're over 40 or if they have other risk factors for endometrial cancer, or if an ultrasound shows that the inside lining of the uterus is thicker than it ought to be. An endometrial biopsy is a test that we would do. And so the way we do an endometrial biopsy is it's done in the office. You're in the same position as in a pap smear, so your legs and stirrups lying on a table. Put a speculum in your vagina, just like a pap smear, so that we can see the cervix. Then we use what's called an endometrial curette, which is this thing, um, to get the sample. And the way it works is we put the endometrial curette in the vagina, up through the cervix, and we push it through the cervix and up into the uterus. There's a little plunger on it that we pull back, which creates suction, and then we just go in and out like that in the uterus, and that sucks some tissue up into this tube. And we take it out and push the plunger down, which puts the tissue into a solution, which then gets sent to the pathologist and they can look at it under the microscope, make slides, and tell us exactly what's going on. The endometrial biopsy does cramp quite a bit, unfortunately. Um, the act of pushing something through the cervix can be very uncomfortable, and the idea of having something moving inside your uterus can cause the uterus to spasm, which will feel like menstrual cramps. So it will cramp, cramps for a minute or two while it's being done, and then you'll be okay. So you're not going to go home in pain. Um, you don't have to worry about that. My advice would be that it's probably smart to take some ibuprofen, um, before you come in, um, four to 600 milligrams would be a good idea. That might help the cramping some. For some women, it's pretty bad, but for others, they really um, don't have um, too much cramping at all. So you never know exactly how it's going to be. My experience is women that have had uh, several children tends to be a little bit easier on them than women that haven't had as many children or have had children by cesarean section. Now, sometimes it's difficult to get the little pipel, the little endometrial curette, through the cervix. And in that case, we use another instrument, which looks kind of scary, um, and this is called a single-tooth tenaculum. And this goes up into the vagina and clips onto the top of the cervix and allows us to put traction on the cervix. And the, this helps us in two ways. Number one, often the cervix is bent uh, as it goes up towards the uterus. And by pulling on the cervix, we can take that bend out, or that corner out, so that we can then pass the curette um, the, the pipel or the curette through the cervix more easily. The other thing is it gives us some traction on the cervix so that when we push with the uh, curette, sometimes when we push against the cervix, the cervix sort of moves in. This way we have traction to pull back against the curette. And so that's something that we can do. Now it does cramp a little bit when we put the, uh, the tenaculum on, but it actually doesn't hurt as much as you would think by looking at it. I mean, if I put this on your finger, it would be horrible. On the cervix, really, uh, it's surprising. It doesn't hurt as much as what you might think. It's really just a cramp. Um, sometimes when we take this off, it'll leave a little bit of bleeding on the cervix, and we'll treat that with a little medication called silver nitrate that stops the bleeding. So it wouldn't be surprising if you had uh, some spotting for a day or two after an endometrial biopsy. Now, sometimes even with the tenaculum and the curette, we have a hard time getting through the cervix. And then we use something called a uterine sound. And this is a little metal device that's sort of shaped uh, like the curette, about the same size, but it's a little stiffer. So if we need to, we can use that to sort of get through the cervix and sort of establish a little tunnel so that the curette will fit in more easily. Now, this is adjustable. You can bend it so that you can make it along with the normal curve of the uterus, depending on how your uterus curves. And so this is another instrument that uh, you may uh, see your doctor use uh, during um, an endometrial biopsy. The biopsy takes um, uh, several days to a week to come back, sometimes a little bit longer. So I usually have my patients come back in two weeks for the results, um, and uh, then we can go from there. And the results will come back most of the time in normal tissue. It may even tell us sort of what phase of the menstrual cycle you're in or what type of um, hormonal milieu uh, the endometrium is seeing. You know, are we seeing, is there too much progesterone around? Is there too much estrogen? Is it a nice balance? But it'll also tell us if there's a precancerous change or if there's um, cancer, which is really the real reason uh, that we're doing the biopsy. Medtwice.com.